Hello and welcome to Bites Bread and Barbecue. My name is Ross Contino. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Ashi OS. With the end of life of Windows 10, a lot of people have been looking at Cache OS to move their computer towards something they would still recognize but would run on older hardware. And Cache OS is a new version of Linux since 2022 that is out of Germany and is supposed to be optimized for performance on older hardware. So let's take a look at actually their offering. Here is a virtual machine that I've created of Cache OS. It is a machine that would be comparable to something you would buy in 2005. It is an eight gigabytes of RAM with four CPUs and a 20 gigabyte hard drive. And when you open um, Cache OS for the first time, this is the screen that you see after installation has occurred. It has a series of different information you can have here. And the most popular installation uses KDE's Plasma interface, which for a Windows 10 user, this is gonna be excellent. The layout looks very similar. In the corner here, you essentially have a start button where if you go up to any of these tabs, it shows you all of the programs you have in those categories and everything that's available, plus whatever you can install will be sorted into this menu. It also puts the settings um, configuration uh, here with all of these different parameters that you have. And if you really want to get into it, you can download different themes that could actually even make this look like Windows 7 or Windows 10. Now I have kept the breeze dark, which is the default. For um, it also comes with fully functioning file folders here that'll look very familiar to any Windows user that you can see um, anything that you've placed into your videos, documents, whatever the structure is very familiar. And the web browser it comes with by default is Firefox. And over on the other side of the screen here, you have things like your volume control, your network control. Um, and all of this is very, very reminiscent of Windows 10. Let's just take for a, a look here for a second, if we find an about system, and it'll show you that this is in fact Cache OS running a Plasma 6.50, which is the latest. Um, and it also is running a kernel uh, for Linux of 6.17.5 uh, and Wayland graphics operations. Uh, this is the most recent kernel available. The reason that it looks this way is the Cache OS runs on top of a Arch structure. So it's going to be rolling releases with the cutting edge of software. This has pros and cons. The pro is that you always have the most up-to-date, most recent thing on your computer, which is really exciting. The con is that sometimes with taking the cutting edge of software, you do have things that break along the way, and you might have to step back and fix things where in a Windows environment, you rarely had to go and fix them yourself. But here you do have the power to do it. So what I decided to do was run a couple little benchmarks um, on Cache OS. Now in the past, nine months ago, I did a series of benchmarks on XFCE targeted at older hardware through a series of six different distributions um, and what I decided to do, even though I have the Plasma up here that looks like Windows uh, 10, I decided since I was trying to compare it to statistics I already have, to try and run Cache OS with the XFCE and see if it truly has enhanced performance. Let's take a look at Cache OS in its XFCE format. And this looks a little bit different. Uh, this does not look like a Windows 10 environment, although I think any user would get very used to it. Um, it kind of has that center bar at the bottom, like maybe a Mac environment would have, but it still has the folders of the desktop that you might have seen in a Windows 7 type environment. And if we go here and we try to find out about this system a little bit, um, let's see if we pull up the about screen, we see that we are using 
XFCE 4.20. We're still running the most recent kernel. XFCE always uses an X11 windowing system. It does not use the newer Wayland. So we're gonna be comparing a similar environment to what I did not months ago. And in this presentation, I'm going to use statistics that I had from nine months ago to compare them to what we had running with XFCE today on this Cache OS. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. I was, as I said before, a virtual machine, eight gigs of RAM, four CPUs, 20 gigabyte hard drive, compare with other XFCE versions. First, memory by NeoFetch. We can see here, uh, if we come down, it gave us varying for each distribution. It was slightly different. And Cache OS was actually in the 800s here, one of the higher. And you can see on this bar graph that it shows us what NeoFetch thought the memory was being used by each just straight up distribution. Memory by HTOP was actually more efficient um, for each of these. And I'm not quite sure why these numbers vary some, but it showed again that Cache OS was more competitive here. All still in a very similar ballpark as the amount of memory that they're using to display XFCE. We looked at HTOP load time. Lower is better here see if Cache OS actually is optimized for performance. And you can see, while maybe not the best in the group, it definitely scored above several of these. Lower is better with Cache OS coming in at 0.08. So it was a good performer as far as load time. Then I went to Sysbench, CPU events in 10 seconds. Higher number is better. And we can see that Linux Mint here actually performed very well, as did Xbuntu. And uh, it demonstrated that um, Cache OS was a little bit in the middle of the pack here at 13,776. Then I went and looked at CPU latency. Lower is better here. And here, Cache OS started to demonstrate that it performed well. To me, it seemed like every time we were testing its interaction with the CPU, the code truly was optimized, and it was racing ahead. Now, Linux Mint is right behind it here at 1.09, but Cache OS led the pack in CPU latency. Then I tested memory latency, and lower is better. And again, Cache OS was a great performer, 0.4. Xbuntu was the top performer at 0.1. Cache OS was doing very, very respectable. And then we looked at Sysbench memory events in 10 seconds, the higher number. So this is how many events it could pose to the memory. And you can see that Cache OS basically blew away the competition here. And I was starting to think that this optimized code is actually something that exists. Finally, I want to take a look at the different Linux kernels that were used for each of these distributions because it does vary a bit. As of this date, on October 27th, 2025, Endeavor OS is using a 6.13.7 kernel, Arch. Fedora is using 6.15, Fedora, their own kernel. Manjaro is using 6.9, Arch. Linux Mint is using 6.8, Ubuntu. Xubuntu is using 6.8, Ubuntu. MX Linux is using 6.14 Debian, and Cache OS is on the cutting edge with 6.17.5 with their own version of Arch-based Zen Linux kernel. Um, and even these other systems here, you can change the kernel number and upgrade some of them. I know that you can take Linux Mint up to 6.11 the last time that I checked. You can do that in the settings, but these are the default settings. For each of these and this may also affect performance but I was impressed with the way that the Cache OS kernel did with CPU events and also with total memory op uh, operations. So this is just a brief look at Cache OS and its performance versus some of the other ones uh, other distributions that are out there um, done on XFCE. Although if you are moving from Windows 10 to Cache OS, I would recommend using the Plasma KDE interface 
because it is much more similar to Windows 10 in appearance and you'll feel right at home. The performance will be slightly different than the numbers I have presented, but my test did tend to show that the kernel has been optimized for performance on possibly older computers that would be running Windows 10. So thanks for stopping by at Bites Bread and Barbecue, and if you found this useful at all, please hit the like button, and if you really found it useful, hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks again. Bye.